Hi everyone, Jeremy Einbinder here for Democratize the Media. So today I was at a Green Party meeting. I'm trying to get involved in third party politics, and it seemed as long as a leftist party is growing that it would be good to get involved, even though they are not as explicitly anti-capitalist as I would like. So anyway, most of the people, including myself, in that meeting were converts from the Bernie Sanders campaign. And most of the people in that movement tended to be social democrats more than socialists. So when it came to people sharing their stories about the arguments that they were facing from liberals and right-wingers about how America is not ready for socialism, the inevitable common refrain was repeated that America is already kind of socialist. And as I tried to say that the public library and the police and the fire departments were technically part of the welfare state, so it's not really socialism. The leader of the meeting sort of pushed me and told me to stop and said that we would get there. He is what we call a watermelon, as in green on the outside and red on the inside. But it still made me think that there were ways to critique the claim that America is already socialist by simply pointing out that it isn't. Al Jazeera's online channel, AJ Plus, came out with a video a long time ago called Five Ways America is Already Socialist. And each one of these examples is an example of the welfare state trying to pass itself off as an example of socialism. So every time the reporter in this video, Francesca Franfio, says something wrong, I will stop the video to refute her. So here is my rebuttal. Two five reasons America is already socialist. And a reminder, it's not. No word strikes more fear into the heart of Fox News anchors. No four syllables shakes the 1% more to its core than socialism. As it should if it were actually in place, which it's not. The problem with socialism is why would President Obama want America to be more socialist than capitalist? He doesn't, not even close, not even close. 43% of 18 to 29 year olds think socialism is okay. Probably a lot of 18 to 29 year olds are under the impression that the welfare state and social democracy is equal to socialism. And that's perfectly benign. As long as the capitalist class makes people think that regulation of the capitalist economy is a completely different social order, they will always be in control. This is a very powerful tool that the capitalist class uses to maintain their power by I'm making the masses think that they've achieved more than they actually have. So what millennials think socialism being okay actually means is that they probably don't quite know what socialism really is, and as you're about to see, neither does Al Jazeera. Socialism is a dirty word in American politics. It's lobbed at presidents to try and tear them down, and used by outsiders to set them apart. Used in both cases incorrectly. But what is it? Socialism is a political and economic theory of social organization that advocates the means of production, distribution, and exchange should be owned or regulated by the community as a whole. Or in other words, worker 
control over the means of production, not, as this video seems to imply, anything the government does. Taxation is not ownership of the means of production. It is regulation on whatever economy happens to be in place. America is a capitalist economy, and there's no denying that, but it cannot be both capitalist and socialist. They are diametrically opposed. Private ownership of the means of production is in place, and it is regulated, but not by the community, by the state. It is a distant bureaucratic regulation that the communities have no direct control over, and they certainly do not own the means of production. And the only way they would have ownership of the means of production would be if they managed it and controlled it themselves. But we do not get a direct say in our government, so it cannot be argued that any government activity from the constitutional republic set up by the American government could be considered socialism. Because we, the community, the people, are not the ones in control of that regulation or ownership. There are many different types of socialists, but the main idea is that the rich and the powerful don't get to call all the shots when it comes to the economy. No, the main idea is democratic ownership and control over all industry inside the economy. But here's the thing that no one will tell you. America is already socialist. No, it's not. Here's why. Americans work like socialists. You know those two days a week where your boss can't berate you? What are they called? The weekend. The weekend was never part of big business's plan. It was fought for and won by the labor movement of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. A labor movement that was full of socialists. So your argument is that because socialists fought for something and the capitalist class made a concession to the socialists, that the concession they made must be a socialistic concession by definition? No. Okay, first of all, there are many things that socialists and social democrats and progressives agree on. But that does not mean that because socialists fight for something in a capitalist environment, that anything they win must be a socialist victory. It is a victory won by people who happen to be socialist, but the weekend is not a socialist invention. It is a regulation on a capitalist economy that socialists were able to win by framing the debate well. It is not workers' control over the way people spend their time. If workers owned industry, that would be socialism. That would be a complete socialist win. But the capitalist class giving a concession to socialist irritators and agitators is not, by extension, socialism. In 1938, Congress passed the Fair Labor Standards Act. It established a 40-hour work week, minimum wage, and eliminated child labor. But it maintained wage labor as evidenced by the minimum wage and it maintained capital as the principal mode of production. Notable concessions, but still not examples of socialism. Which is a good thing, unless you run a sweatshop. Some of the most remarkable Americans, maybe even some of your heroes, were socialists. Mark Twain, Ernest Hemingway, Jack London, Cesar Chavez, Helen Keller, even Harry Houdini was a socialist. Pretty irrelevant, I mean, yeah, these people had a profound impact on American culture, but they didn't influence 
it to the point that they helped establish a socialist society. They just didn't. Capitalism still exists. It's regulated by a government which maintains it. It's not socialism, and socialism isn't present in America, or in any nation state, for that matter. Now America has Bernie Sanders, who calls himself a democratic socialist. Incorrectly. And Danny Glover, who's so down. Again, irrelevant. But I'm still waiting on Lethal Weapon 5, the picket line. Whenever you get on a highway, drive over a bridge, use electricity from a dam, or go to a school or hospital, you're probably partaking in American socialism. You are absolutely not partaking in American socialism because you are not in control of the industry you work with. You do not own the industry you work with. You do not own the means of production. You are just partaking in a regulated welfare state capitalist economy. That's all. To pull the country out of the Great Depression, over 30,000 public works programs were sponsored by the government under Franklin D. Roosevelt's New Deal. A government which thrives on the rights of property owners to hold capital as a mode of ownership. It is not a socialist economy and it is not a democratic government. It is not a government that is controlled by the working class. Therefore, since it is not a government in which the proletariat is in control of it, simply being the government would not make it socialism. The only way that being the government would mean socialism is if the government was controlled by the working class themselves. Infrastructure. Infrastructure that's now crumbling, even with President Obama's 2009 economic stimulus package, which tried to pull us out of the most recent Wall Street-induced financial meltdown. But the New Deal wasn't labeled socialism, except by its critics. FDR defended it, saying, The test of our progress is not whether we add more to the abundance of those who have much, it is whether we provide enough for those who have little. It wasn't labeled socialism, except by its ignorant critics because it wasn't socialism. The New Deal also included unemployment insurance and social security, making sure that you can get back on your feet when you lose your job and you're taken care of when you get old and crotchety. Both of which the distant bureaucratic government is in charge of managing and not the people who actually receive the benefits. It is regulated welfare statism, not Socialism. You could call it big government socialism or just looking out for one another. A socialist economy may have a large state, it may have a small state, it may choose to eliminate the state. Big government has nothing to do with socialism, and socialism has nothing to do with big government. They are completely different mechanisms with regards to organizing society. The military, the one area of spending no one would dare call socialist. A lot of liberals do call it socialist as a fuck you to conservatives, but again, it's not. And yet, it's largely funded by you, the taxpayer. Without your consent, your management, your input, your, your decision with regard to uh, matters of intervention, your decision with regard to a weapon manufacturing, your decision with regard to military occupation overseas, your decision with regard to the use of diplomacy he talks, your decision with regard to anything in the military, but you pay for it without your consent, so it must be e socialism and it must be you're doing because you pay for it, but only because a distant government tells you to. Now, if the military was run democratically by the soldiers themselves, or the populace 
had a say in how they spend their military budgets. That would be a different conversation. Then you could go, all the military and socialist institution, if it was democratically organized. But it's not. It is completely in the hands of the United States government, which we do not have the means to hold accountable. The commander-in-chief of the armed forces is one person. The military is not a socialist institution. It is an authoritarian state capitalist institution which is profitable to weapons manufacturers and it is profitable to the oil industries of many different countries abroad. Its use is to increase profits in war industries. War is an industry and it is not a socialist institution. It increases profits, it kills people, and people are propagated into who accepting it as some sort of noble position in society, and we are tricked into thinking it is a socialist institution, and we are providing for the common good. We are not doing that. We do not have control over it. The soldiers need to who have control over it. The soldiers need to own it. But until they do, the military is nowhere close to anything resembling socialism. Strange for all the wars the U.S. has fought trying to stop the spread of socialist ideas. You'd think that war was a capitalist venture. It totally is a capitalist venture. Around 27% of your tax dollar goes to fund the biggest and most expensive military in the world with a budget of $598.5 billion. Compare that to spending on unemployment, social security, education, science and infrastructure, and it looks like the military is red all over. That's an insult to reds because, as I'll repeat, socialism does not simply mean anything a government does. It doesn't. It's not that. Good God, y'all. Welfare is also one of those things that's bad mouth for being socialist, because why take care of the needy? But what about corporate welfare? In other words, a welfare state which props up the interest of the capitalist class and the capitalist mode of production, which somehow you will or try to argue is socialism. Since 2000, Uncle Sam has given $68 billion in business grants and tax credits, two-thirds of which has gone to large corporations. Transportation and energy are the biggest beneficiaries. Even some of the biggest corporations, like Walmart, encourage their employees to use food stamps and other government services because apparently the most profitable corporation in the world can't pay a livable wage. And apparently you can understand that government programs and a socialist economy are not synonymous. It's almost like socialism is fine if it helps the rich, but terrible if it helps everyone else. There is no such thing as socialism for the rich or the poor. It is a completely different economy in which wealth is allocated completely differently by the people who actually create it. There is no helping. It is not not given to the population. It is not understood as a concession from the government. It is ownership of the means of production by the working class. So there would be no helping. Socialism would not be helped by a distant bureaucratic government. It would be taken under control by the working class, the proletariat, as it were. In the end of the day, socialism is as American as apple pie. No, it's not. Bought at a Walmart with food stamps. Food stamps are not an example of socialism. This video is what may be referred to as controlled opposition. There is a working class of people, a population, the masses, 
that are oppressed. And they are oppressed under the system of capitalism and wage labor and class society split up between a working class and an owner class. But as long as we continue to think that concessions made under a capitalist economy are an example of socialism, a completely different social order, then the capitalist class have nothing to fear. If we don't fight capitalism in all its forms, welfare statism or not, we will lose the will to fight oppression and we will passively accept capitalist rule in any form that's permissible by a quiet population that lets it happen because we already think we've won. By listening to videos like this, this makes it seem like we've already won the fight against capitalist oppression. We haven't. Capitalism is still in place. Socialism is not. The workers do not have control over the means of production. They need to have control over the means of production. Cis hetero patriarchy still exists. It needs to be torn down. <laughs> People are not equal in this society right now, and they need to fight for that equality, that equity, that liberation. But if we keep listening to liberal controlled opposition like this, we'll never get there because we'll be e tricked into thinking that the finish line is a thousand miles before it actually is. We need to keep going, even if the capitalist class tells us that we've done enough. Until the capitalist class is no longer in control of us, we haven't done enough. And until we have control over industry, all industry, democratically, we haven't done enough. <sighs> this includes the media, all media, including YouTube, including Google, which will take most of this data and have control over it, and have control over how this video is circulated. But, until we win the fight, I'll continue to say, I'm Jeremy Einbinder for Democratize the Media. Don't let them fool you. It's our turn. We're in the race. And we have to win. Thanks for watching.